Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and in today's video we're going to be focusing on improving your player's dribbling. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be going into a technical practice which is going to be focusing on the player's dribbling and acceleration skills and then quick passes as well. But before we get into it, let's have a look how many players we're working with this week and the equipment that we'll be using. Now, in terms of players this week, we're going to have 10 players in total and we're going to be working without a goalkeeper. But if you have a goalkeeper, you can add them into the session, okay? In terms of the equipment, we're going to be focusing on using balls, bibs and cones. And we're going to try and use poles and mannequins in these areas so it's something that the players have got to dribble around. And also when we move into our small sided game at the end, we're going to be using uh, gates or small sided goals. So if you don't have small sided goals, you can use poles to set out an area as a gate instead. So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, you're going to have 20 yards of depth okay, in here. And then you're going to have 10 yards of width in each team and then just a gap in the middle in between both teams. You're going to have a player starting on the wider cone on each side here and the players are going to start inside here. Now, how it's going to work is the players are going to accelerate okay, to the top cone. They're going to move around it. Then they're going to accelerate back towards the middle and then they're going to open out, play to this player here who receives it in space to play first time to the next player and then we go again. This player, after they've played that pass, moves out here. This player moves to the back, okay? And then this player drives in, comes round, plays into here, and then we go again. And then this player goes to the back of the queue, okay? And this player comes out here. So the first couple of times you can you do it, you kind of want to just do it as a activation for the players in terms of getting used to the touches, using, using both feet. Then you can look to make it a competition. So you can do it where each team to get has to get every player dribbling round once. So once this player at the start, okay, has dribbled round and passed to the player and has gone back, then the first team back will win, okay? So obviously both teams will be going at the same time. So as they approach here now, they want to stay nice and tight and close to the cone or the pole, okay? Using both feet to enable to shift the ball. Because if you try and use one foot here, they've got to take more touches, okay, to stay in control. Whereas they, they, let's say they approach with the left, turn with the right, and then push out with the right again here. Then they do the same here. They can use the right and left to turn, then play it in. Whereas we just used to use, if we like, try and use the same foot each time, because we're trying to move at a high speed as well, and then when we're looking to slow down, okay, we can lose... Uh, um, control of the ball by using that same foot all the time you've got to be it's, the player's got to get used to be able to use both feet when turning they stay more in control of the ball okay and it's a lot smoother motion when they're turning then they can look to accelerate into the space and again using both feet stay in control of the ball okay using insides outside of the feet okay and keeping the ball a good distance okay from the body so you don't want it to be miles when the players running after it, but we don't want it to be too tight where we literally just touch 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 all the time okay so when we when we're taking the touches it just wants to be that little bit away from the from the body okay so the next touch we're always in control of the ball okay we're able to maintain so we had to stop okay we can easily put our foot on the ball we're not having to chase after the ball okay but we're also able to gain some speed when we're dribbling into space we will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session Now moving into part two of this week's session, we're now moving to our second kind of technical practice, which again is going to be uh, moving into like a little competition between the players as well. Now the reason we do it as competitions is because obviously for the players then they can try, sometimes they can cause a little bit of panic and players rush things. So we're trying to get it into an area where it's like when they're in games, making sure that we're staying calm and still doing the right things, okay? Whereas in these situations here, if we're not competing against each other, the players could move through as slowly as they want, okay? And then 
the next player goes and so forth. Whereas if we say, right, there's points on the line, okay, the player's going to try and go through quicker, so we've got to make sure we're still doing the right things and we're still working on our right techniques whilst competing at the same time, which we're obviously trying to do in a game. So in terms of the setup here, so the distance from the start point for each team, okay, and the ladder, it's just going to be five yards, okay. Then you're going to have a ladder. If you don't have a ladder, you could use hurdles, okay, you just use cones for the players to go through where you've got, if you've got rings, you can do that. Then once the players come out of the ladder, okay, there's going to be a 10-yard gap between the ladders and the cones in here, and then there's going to be another 10-yard gap between the cones and the goals, okay? The last player is the only one that scores in the goals, okay? Now, you can change that if you wanted to as well. So the distance between the cones is just a couple of, it's just maximum two yards, okay? So what the player's going to do, they're going to come through the ladders, get the ball, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to work off the left side first, okay? So what the players do is they come through the gaps, okay? Here on the left side, round, come back through the gap, here, here, and then as they come out here, they're then going to come across the other side, do the same thing again, so maintaining control of the ball as we come through, maintaining control of the ball, and then as the player comes back through here, there, they leave the ball there, and then they sprint back to the back of the queue, and then the next player goes. So obviously, the Reds will do the same. Now, it's the exact same for the next three players. So the first four players do the same. Now, the final player will dribble through, okay, in and out, in and out, and then when they come to this side, they come in, they come out, they come in, come out, and then as they come back out, okay, they look to turn into the space here and finish, okay? That's when the team is done. After they've finished, they sprint back to the, back to the queue, and then they're done. However, if this player turns here, okay, shoots, hits the post, or it goes wide, they have to stand still for three seconds. So then if this player here, as they're about to shoot, is still, let's just say they're coming out of here, out of here, as they come out of here, okay, this player shoots and misses, they've got to wait for three seconds, there's one, two, three, they score, and then it's a race back to the start, okay? Now, with the finish as well, we don't want the players going two yards away from goal. So as soon as they turn, okay, you can say that they have to finish before the first line of the cones. So as they turn round, they have to literally shoot, okay? So again, that composure when they finish and not being able to go, yeah, turning my head by a few yards, gonna go there and then finish. And also, it gives them a longer sprint back as well. So the first team to get the ball, uh, to get every player around, finish in the goal, and then the last player back to the back of the queue, will get the points, okay? If the player at the end misses, they have to wait three seconds on the spot, and then they can sprint into the end, okay? And like I say, you can just keep competing with the two teams. If you wanted to as well, each player could have a ball. You could just line up a few footballs here. You could just have a, a, a little box in here where a player takes a ball out, and every player, uh, after they've done their final dribble, shoots, and then if they miss, they have to wait three seconds, which means when they sprint back, this player has to wait three seconds, and so forth. So that's just a little progression as well. We'll now move into our next animation before moving on to the final part of this week's session. Okay, now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now moving into a small side of game based scenario, which is going to be focused on driving into space to score. So, the setup for this part of the session, you're going to have 20 yards of width centrally, and then you're going to have uh, between 5 and 10 yards either side for the floaters. Now, in terms of the depth, okay, so these areas here are going to be 15 yards, okay, so there's 30, and then you're going to go 25 yards in the middle. So 55 yards of depth, okay, or whatever you have, okay. Now, you're going to have 3v3 in the middle area, floaters either side, you look to help keep the ball, and then a player either side. So, where the red player is in here, the blues are trying to score in there, so obviously they've got a defender to try and tackle them, and also you've got a player to keep the ball. Now, the blue player is going to be in this one. Now, this red player can, can swap over, so if they receive it in here, 
they can drive into there. Someone has to take the place. You always have to have one player in this area. So it's always 3v3 in here. Now, each team's got two gates or goals, okay? The players have got to drive through to finish, okay? So they get a goal. So let's say we're going to start here. Ball gets played into the blues. They work into here. This player receives it, drives into the space. Red player goes in down, turns them, goes in there, drives through the gates, 1-0, okay? Then we come back in and we go again. So the reason we have the floaters so that when the players receive the ball, okay, and they're getting closed down in here, 3v3, we're trying to work into areas where we can drive into space, okay? So this player might play into here, we play to the floater, and now because the floater's in here, what we can do here is we can get a player coming towards the ball and a player moving off into space, and then you kind of get that overload. So th this player might think, oh, I'm going to drive into, uh, close this player down here, leaves the space in there, we drive in, we drive in, we score. Okay, so again, what we're trying to do is with the players here now is that when the floaters get the ball, we're focusing on movements ahead of the ball, which then can create space for somebody else to receive the ball. Okay, and then what we say in here now is is that when this player receives the ball, okay, you get that movement ahead, and then okay, there's no one to receive the ball. We switch the play in here. You got the floater dropping in here. You might have a player moving in. Okay, here which brings a player in, and then we could receive the ball on the back foot. And then we have that player out wide here again, floaters again, there, drive in, defender comes in, we turn and we go. So you use the floaters to switch the play, move the opposition about, and then you find more space in central areas because you're switching that play, which means the gap's going to go quickly, but it has to be played in, in quite quick. So again, well, then you've got that extra player as well, so you're not able to keep the ball. Okay, then, yeah, let's play to this player. They're going to drive in then, this player comes out, then the players think, oh, we've got to close him down. They look to close him down, this player receives it set into this player and then confidence to drive in. So what we've been working on in terms of attacking that space, okay, having confidence on the ball, okay, use of both feet, and then again, when you're going at the defender, attacking at speed, okay, because if you slow it down, it's easy for the defender to put themselves in a position where they want to show you where to go. Whereas if you're attacking at speed, they've got to react a bit more, okay, and you can change direction quicker, okay, and it's hard for the defender, obviously, to react to that and position themselves in a place where to score. Then, if the defender wins it back here, Okay, so if this player goes to drive in, if the defender wins it back, then we can look to set that counter. Because obviously now, they've got a player who's got to track back in. We can play into here, we use that overload, drive in and score. Okay, so for the players in there, be brave on the ball, okay, be confident on the ball, take risks to go forward because they've got to drive into this final third, and then be clever and use the floaters to retain possession, to then find the gaps, to then drive through. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can sign up to view over 900 session plans like this. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.